I just want to thank you for inviting me here today to speak. On December 4th of 2010, I aged out of foster care and was released after seven months and being in a lockup adolescent psychiatric hospital. I was ordered there after my social worker told the court I had borderline personality disorder, major depressive disorder, and suicidal ideation. I was forced to take strong doses of psychiatric medication and told I could possibly never live on my own. Only my CASA or guardian and litem believed me that I didn't need the drugs. The seven months I lived there felt like being in jail. After expressing my anger at being there, I had to spend a month sleeping on a four inch foam mattress in a concrete padded room. After reviewing my records, I discovered that the foster care system paid $15,000 a month, about $120,000 to lock me up in the psychiatric ward and take drugs I personally feel I did not need. I am now 20 years old. Last, last month, I earned my certificate in, um, for a nurse's aid, and I've been attending Bellingham Technical College, working towards the um, RN program. My GPA is currently at 3.92. I've been living in my own apartment for more than 18 months. I've been on all psychiatric medication for almost two years. What happened? How did I transition from being di diagnosed a mentally disabled foster youth to a model student and productive member of society? In the five minutes I've been given to speak, I don't have the time to tell you my whole story. <laughs> I was lucky when I was 16, a man who I now consider my father adopted my then 10-year-old brother from foster care. He hired an attorney to fight the state's plan to transfer me to an adult psychiatric facility. He picked me up on my 18th birthday and took me to live with his friends. They are now my family too, so today it feels like I have two dads and a mom. The next six months were among the most difficult in my life. Because of my diagnosis in foster care, we couldn't find a psychiatrist willing to take me off the drugs. So we had to do it ourselves. One of the medications I was on can cause seizures, resulting in death if not taken off carefully. My dad recently wrote a book about adopting my brother from foster care. And some of the professionals who read it advised him on how to get me off the medication. We also discovered that I had a rare heart condition that required three surgeries at Swedish Hospital. My heart condition caused fainting episodes and disorientation. My state social worker and the staff at the psychiatric hospital thought my painting and disorientation was attention-seeking behavior further from the truth. Six months of after aging out of foster care, I managed to graduate from Mount Baker High School with my class. A few months later, I moved into my own apartment. My new family helped me find an excellent therapist who I've been seeing weekly for more than two years. I know some of the kids I was locked up with needed medication. They heard voices that weren't there, and sometimes they got violent. But I believe many of the kids were like me and didn't need to be drugged. What they needed was a family that loved them and parents to guide them. When I think about the government spending over $120,000 locking me up and forcing me to take drugs, it makes me very angry. Today, when my dad and I drove down here, we took a long detour on I-5 because a bridge recently collapsed. I wish that money had been spent fixing bridges. <laughs> In 2011, the federal GAO released a study comparing foster kids with other kids receiving psychiatric medication. I watched a special about it on 2020. The GAO found that foster kids are 2.7 to 4.5 times more likely to receive psychiatric drugs. Most experts agree that children in the United States are over-medicated. Unfortunately, it's worse for foster kids. Although I can never get the seven months back that I was locked up and forced to take drugs. I hope that telling my story will help others and encourage change to our foster care system. I, will be, I am forever grateful for my CASA for telling the court that he agreed with me and that I did not need the medication. And I am forever grateful for my new family and my twin sister for helping support me to become the person I am here today. I just want to say thanks.